Hi, everybody. I'm Ian Boothby. I'm the creator of the Sparks series of books, and you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Ian Boothby about his new graphic novel, Sparks, Future Perfect. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. It's also available on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube. I invite you to like and subscribe. Based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Ian is a writer of comic books and cartoon strips, as well as a sketch and improv comedian. He's an Eisner Award-winning comic book creator known for his work as a main writer on The Simpsons comic book, and one of the lead writers on Futurano Comics for Matt Groening's Bongo Comics. He's been nominated for the Schuster and Harvey Awards. Ian currently is the writer and co-creator of the Scholastic Graphics graphic novel series Sparks, with artist Nina Matsumoto, and the writer and co-creator of the image comic series Exorcisters, with artist Giselle Lagasse. Ian was a feature writer for Mad Magazine, where along with Pia Guerra, he created the comic strip Meanwhile, which ran until the end of the magazine's run. He now works with Pia creating cartoons for The New Yorker and the comic strip Mannequin on the Moon. On television, he is creator of the CBC sketch comedy series The Eleventh Hour, called The Funniest Sketch Series Since SCTV by the National Post. He co-created the Jesse Award-winning Free Willy Shakespeare for the Vancouver Theatre Sports League, and the comedy shows Swordplay and James Bond Live. Ian founded and directed the Canadian Comedy Award-winning sketch group Canadian Content and is a co-host of The Sneaky Dragon, Tolly Tintin, and Completely Beatles Podcasts. Ian also wants you to know that Adam Sandler hit a Subway sandwich into his mouth in the movie Happy Gilmore. Sparks Future Perfect is described as Charlie and August, the kiddie duo who controlled the incredible Sparks costume, are exhausted. It's hard work saving people all the time. So what better way to relax than to get away to a beautiful tropical island? But when weird things start to happen and they discover that the island holds a surprising secret, they're blasted off on their craziest adventure yet. And this time they have to save themselves. And so without further ado, here's my chat with Ian Boothby about his new graphic novel, Sparks, Future Perfect. So Ian Boothby, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. No, oh, absolutely. My pleasure. I appreciate your time. What I usually do to start off the interview is ask the creator about their first comic book. So I'm wondering if you remember, what was the first comic book that you read? First comic book that I remember, well, there's uh, there's blurs of, uh, you know, uh, being in the emergency room. And uh, there were some comic books lying around. And there was one that was uh, a Superboy, which was Superman's adventures when he was a boy. And that kind of blew my mind. The idea that, like, wait a minute. He was he was a super boy before he was a superman. That's that's crazy. And I started to read it, and then I got uh, pulled into the emergency room because uh, they had to deal with a concussion I had. So I didn't get to finish it. It's very well, frustrating. Yeah, well, that that's more important getting your concussion uh, looked at than the comic book. But uh, yeah, but, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I had one recently as well. So you're correct. I understand <laughs> that was the right thing, thing to do. But the first comic that I bought on my own was uh, uh, an issue of Spider-Man, a spectacular Spider-Man, where uh, on the cover, uh, Medusa, who is a superhero, sometimes villain, uh, who had uh, hair that can grab things, was uh, destroying a roller coaster with some people on it. And that just was the most exciting thing in the world to me. And so I, I bought that and I immediately went back to the store to get a, another comic book. And that one was The Avengers. And that introduced me to like the Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, Captain America and Iron Man and all these characters and Thor. And from that point on, I was hooked. Yeah, for sure. No, those are great books growing up. But I'm wondering who or what inspires you to create today? Uh, well, my wife, for sure. Uh, my wife is, is uh, Pia Guerra, who is uh, the co-creator of the comic Why the Last Man and is just this amazing creative force. So she's always an inspiration. And I do a lot of work with her. We work together on uh, Mad Magazine doing single panel strips. And we also do a regular daily uh, strip called Mannequin on the Moon for Go Comics. And so I always love working with her. Uh, if I was to, if it was to say an artist that uh, it really inspires me right now, it's Jeffrey Brown. He kind of 
splits the difference between doing corporate work like he'll do Star Wars books in a very uh, childlike style, uh, but he also does his own autobiographical uh, stories about his life and you know kind of his troubled childhood, and uh, and does it all brilliantly and 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 so, and so funny. He did a parody of Transformers that I can't remember the name of, but almost Transforma Bots or something, okay. but was just so so dead on and amazing. And uh, recently he did a book called Batman and Robin and Howard. That's and right. it was, it was, yeah, it was Batman's uh, son, Damien going to uh, school, a public school and meeting a guy named Howard. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Oh, yeah. That was a free comic book day book. I remember that. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Good stuff. Well, definitely good inspirations. And I uh, want to switch gears and talk about your latest project that you have out now called Sparks Future Perfect. And I got to tell you, every time I was typing perfect into the laptop, it kept changing and autocorrect. <laughs> Didn't like, so it's it's perfect as a cat would purr and then fact at the end. So very nice pun there, that's for sure. Yeah, you're right that you have found a flaw in the system, though, <laughs> for sure. Though when you do enter Sparks uh, Future Perfect and spell it uh, the right way, not the right way for the book, but the right way for life, uh, it does take you to the book as well. So very it's cool. it's it's okay. So what's the story about and what inspired you to create it? Well, uh, this is the third book in the Sparks series. The general idea is no one takes cats seriously as heroes. So uh, these two cats decide to dress up as a dog. People do take seriously and they become the greatest dog hero in the world. They are have kind of uh, their version of Alfred, which is a litter box. And they have a friend who's a squirrel uh, who knows their secret identity. It's a mix of uh, comedy and action and dealing with some issues uh, like PTSD and uh, and and trauma uh, as well. And so uh, in the first book, we, we deal with uh, some agoraphobia that uh, one of the cats has. The second, kind of a fear of birthdays and abandonment. And in the third uh, one, uh, Future Perfect, one of the main characters lost their owner, you know, due to a little bit of a tragedy in their past. And they try to resolve it using time travel. And we kind of deal with the idea of, uh, you know, how much of your past should you remove and forget about? And, you know, does your past make you who you are? And in between uh, all of that, there's also a lot of uh, big comedy with a uh, bird taking over the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was pretty funny, I tell you, that's for sure. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. And yeah, I do that with my friend uh, Nina Matsumoto and uh, my podcast partner, uh, David Dedrick. Nina is the artist on the book. I'm the writer. And David is the colorist. And uh, it's just been such a treat to work with the both of them on this. They both do such a great job. And this is your third book together? That's correct. Yeah. It was the first book was called Sparks. The second one was Sparks Double Dog Dare. And this is uh, the third one, Future Perfect. So I would assume that at this point, you guys have sort of a shortcut in terms of language of how you're creating these books. Would you say that's a fair assumption? Well, Dave and I have known each other since high school, uh, where we were in a sketch comedy group together, and we've been doing a pod, a couple of podcasts. We did the Sneaky Dragon podcast. We did one about Tintin called Totally Tintin, one about the Beatles, uh, completely Beatles. And so we definitely have a series of shortcuts and know each other better than I almost know anyone else in the world. Nina, I met when we were both working on the Simpsons comics ah, right. uh, for, for Matt Groening, and she lived in uh, Vancouver, as I did, but we didn't know each other, and they put us together for a manga issue of the Simpsons uh, that uh, she was absolutely perfect for, and yeah, we really hit it off and uh, and kind of developed our, you know, uh, working together style on on that book so when it came time to do something on our own after bungalow comics wrapped up we kind of did have a little bit of a, a running start nice now i wanted to ask you about another series you worked on called exorcisters with giselle lagasse uh, which was a tremendous series i'm wondering do you have any plans to continue that in the future well we'd like to what's uh, what happened was the second series of the books they we we did them in five issue arcs and, this, and the second one was coming out uh, at a time comic book stores weren't open during COVID. So we weren't able to release the uh, individual issues that would then let her be uh, collected. So instead, we, we basically released one issue, which was issue number six, and then just released the collection of what the other issues would be. The only problem with that was uh, Giselle then wasn't able to get paid for doing those issues. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, we're waiting right now to, until yeah, and it, it's doing okay. Sales of the book is, is quite are quite good. Uh, we're just waiting until uh, sales of the trades reach a certain point where then is financially viable for her to do the next series of books. But uh, I think uh, Image would be game for it, and we're definitely game for doing it as well. The story behind it is it, it seems like there's two sisters who will uh, get your soul back if you s- sold it uh, to the devil. But the twist being uh, it's actually just one person uh, whose mom sold uh, her daughter's soul when she was a kid. And then later she was able to uh, get it back. But by that point, she was older and the soul had uh, gone through its own things and they weren't able to kind of merge again. And so instead they pretend to be uh, sisters and help uh, other people uh, with the same problems that uh, they had. Good stuff. Well, that that leads to my next question then, which is about the difference in writing styles for a middle grade audience such as Sparks with a more adult or mature book like Exorcisters. What is the difference? Less swears. That would be about <laughs> it. I, I would say there's less uh, sexual content. We we get a little bit of that in, in the Exorcisters as one of the characters is a bit of a, uh, a hedonist. But I, I'd say like, even though Sparks is written for a younger, initially written for a younger audience, uh, both Nina and I don't do books for kids specifically. We do books for everybody. We try to do that uh, Pixar audience where everyone would enjoy it. And that's what we we did with The Simpsons, which which is a real all ages book. And so, you know, even though we have to tone down certain amounts of content, we try to aim humor wise and uh, and the emotional arts. uh, We try to make them, you know, as mature as we can. So in both of those books, uh, again, that we deal with trauma and we deal with it through comedy and uh, action, Uh, again, being very inspired by the Pixar model. Would you say that putting aside, you know, swearing and and the themes could be common? Do you think that th- perhaps the middle grade readers have a shorter attention span? Would you say that you can't use as many words to get across your ideas? Would that make sense? I don't think so because you know when I see the kids reading the books, they grab the books, they just sit down on the floor, open them up, and just want to read the whole thing. And it's it's not like there is a short attention span for kids with those books. You know, I, I see a kid de- devouring a, a Raina Tegelmeyer book and, you know, they just like go through the whole thing, just like they used to do with like Harry Potter. You know, right. uh, you, you, get, you bought a, a kid one of those books and one they could get away from their parents who also wanted to read it. They would start to finish, you know, it was time for bed. But no, they want to they want to keep reading the book. I think that's fine. You don't have to worry too much, too much about that. Good. Now we talked about Sparks. Uh, do you have any other up and coming projects that you can talk about? Uh, I am still doing uh, this daily comic strip with my wife, uh, Pia, uh, which is called Mannequin on the Moon. And so uh, we're working on that together uh, uh, most days. And we do um, comic strips for The New Yorker as well. And we are working on a couple of things that we can't mention. Yeah, that's that's basically it. I'm just trying to work with, uh, with, with Pia as much as possible. Uh, again, the COVID thing kind of had us working together more than we normally would because we couldn't really go out to cons and meet other people and do other things. And so uh, we have been enjoying each other's company and uh, creativity. And hopefully we'll be doing more uh, Sparks, or if not that, Nina and I will definitely be doing some other uh, work together. Yeah, you, you you hit upon my next thing, which is uh, conventions and festivals. I know that we're slowly transitioning out of this uh, COVID pandemic. Do you have any plans to attend any conventions or festivals this year? Well, we just did Vancouver Fan Expo, which is the first one in a couple of years, a few weeks ago, and that was that was interesting. That was there was only a couple of moments where it felt like I'm not sure this feels 100% safe, but we felt we felt okay. Now, when we're adding flying to the mix, yeah. uh, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Uh, we we have been offered a couple of conventions locally in Canada, so we may be trying those out. The plan is right now to do one in Belgium in October. So uh, hopefully that will be able to happen and uh, very much looking forward to that. And uh, at the at the same time, when I'm there, uh, the colorist from Sparks will be joining us and we're going to try and see the Hergé Museum for the first oh, time. Very nice. That, that'll that really uh, be good for your Tintin podcast. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, we'll do the one bonus episode. We've gone through all the books and all the movies and TV shows. And now, yeah, it would be nice to just do that one thing as a capper. Here's a question right out of, out of the blue. 
what is your favorite Tintin book? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the uh, Cigars of the Pharaoh. Really? Say. Okay. Yeah, I'd say Cigars of the Pharaoh. I enjoyed that one. Yeah. Good. Thought that start to finish was a pretty was a pretty good one. I'm trying to remember the name of the one that has Tintin uh, shushing the audience on the <laughs> cover uh, as uh, as uh, you know the nightingale sings. The woman. Oh, was the it the Castafoyer Emerald? Was that it? I think that one. I also enjoyed it. Yeah. There's lots of good ones, that's for sure. That's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was fun because I'd never really read them before. And so normally what we do with our podcast is Dave's usually the expert on the subject, and then I'm along for the ride learning as uh, as we go. And that was definitely the case with Tintin. But it was a real treat to do it. For sure. Well, with all your different projects and, and efforts on the go, I'm wondering if you have a website that you recommend where people go to find out more about your current and your future projects. Sure, I'd say the one, uh, the the two I'd recommend right now is sparkscomic.com, and that'll give you all the information about Sparks. So sparkscomic.com and uh, Go Comics. Uh, I'm trying to remember if, it, if it's called gocomics.com or uh, yeah, gocomics.com uh, has Mannequin on the Moon on it as well as a whole bunch of other uh, comics. But yeah, go to gocomics.com and enter Mannequin on the Moon, and you will see our daily strip there. Great. Well. Ian, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you'd like to get across in this interview? Oh, geez. Uh, I'd say if you've got a story that you want to tell, there's never been a better time to tell it through comics. Uh, even if you don't have it published in book form, web comics are such an amazing way to express yourself uh, right now. That was how Nina got um, uh, seen by the folks at Bongo Comics. She was she put her stuff up online and uh, it got it got seen and noticed and and now this is what she does for a living. I started off at a time where I had to like publish my own stuff through Kinkos, uh, Xerox uh, Comics with kind of the mini comics revolution in the 90s. And if I had access to web comics technology when I was a uh, younger, oh boy, uh, I, I would have been so grateful for that. Uh, but right now, there's no reason, even if you can just draw stick figures, there's still people, there's so many successful stick figure comics out there. There's no reason to not take your ideas and put them into comics form and get them out there. Uh, and I would advise people to do so and then see what else is out there, because there's such a wide variety of things out there that even if you think, eh, I don't really like comics, uh, there's probably something out there that, you, that would uh, strike your fancy. Thanks to Ian for the chat. You can discover more about Sparks Future Perfect at sparkscomic.com. You can discover more work by Ian at gocomics.com slash mannequin hyphen on hyphen the hyphen moon. Ian can be found on Twitter at Ian Boothby. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also, check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website and follow along on Twitter at True North Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2021.